Howdy everyone. Today we want to talk about writing chemical formulas. Now if you haven't already listened to my naming chemical formulas, you need to go back, find that video. It's right there on my channel. If you're not a member, type in Mr. Kazi, go to my uh, channel and join. But you want to be sure to have gone over some of the previous videos because I assume that you know a certain amount of things when you're getting ready to do this video. But this video is about writing chemical formulas. It's kind of exciting because it kind of seems like magic. When we sit down, we can write these uh, chemical formulas and most people can't do it. Practice, 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 and you'll get really good at this. So let's get going. In this lesson, we'll go through the formula anatomy, binary compounds, writing formulas, and ionic and covalent formulas. You will need a periodic table, unless you have it memorized. You'll need a list of polyatomic ions. And if you get my list from one of the previous uh, videos, you'll have a list of the uh, metal cations and the prefixes as well. All right, and here we uh, realize uh, you need to know the oxidation numbers, polyatomic ions, the periodic table, covalent and ionic bonds, and the chemical names. Very important to know these things, especially be familiar with the covalent and ionic bonds. So a chemical formula, what is it? It's a symbolic representation of a chemical compound. So let's look at potassium permanganate. Its symbolic representation would be KMNO4. Formula anatomy, something we need to make sure we understand how formulas are put together. So there is a formula. The CAF, calcium fluoride, uh, or the calcium and the fluorine, that's the elements. The little numbers down here are subscripts. There must be two fluorines, so we put a subscript two. There's only one calcium, and just like in algebra, we don't write ones in this case. The coefficient can tell me how many molecules there are, or not molecules, but formula uh, units. Remember that calcium fluoride is ionic, so it's formula units or it can tell me how many moles there are. Remember, most compounds are binary, meaning they have two parts, KCl or H2O. Notice that KCl is potassium and chlorine, and H2O is hydrogen and oxygen. Place the more metallic element first, and the less metallic second. Now remember, the more you are to the left of the periodic table, the more metallic you are, the more you are to the right of the periodic table, the less metallic you are. So there we go. Potassium is the metal. Chlorine is the non-metal. Sulfur is the more metallic. And oxygen is the less metallic, even though neither one of those are truly metals. And calcium fluoride yeah, shows us that calcium is a metal and fluorine is the non-metal. But even if they're not metals, it's the more metallic, the more to the left or the more to the right for non-metallic. All right, writing ionic formulas. Make sure you get these rules down. One, put the cation first and then the anion. Balance the charges, very important. Use subscripts to show the number of ions. Now one big mistake that people make with ionic formulas is that they use prefixes. Do not use prefixes with the ionic compounds. We use prefixes only with covalent compounds. Okay? Example, lithium nitrate. Lithium is our cation and nitrate is our anion. That's usually pretty easy to do because remember when we name things, the cation is written first and the anion is written second. So we can tell that uh, lithium has to be the cation. Look on the periodic table, realize it has a charge of plus one. Look on your uh, polyatomic ion list, or if you have it memorized, you'll know that nitrate is a negative one. Well, one and negative one is balanced. And if they algebraically balance, that's good. We're done. Lithium nitrate. See how it's written? All right, calcium chloride. Calcium is our cation. Calcium has a plus two charge. And chlorine is our anion, and chlorine has a negative one charge. And we can get that from the periodic table. And of course, if you don't know how to do the valence or the oxidation charges, you need to go 
watch some of the other videos on this idea. Go back and do the one on Lewis.symbols and oxidations. 2 plus negative 1 is not 0. As a matter of fact, it's plus 1, so it's not balanced. It must balance to 0. So what do we do? We get more chlorine ions. By getting more chlorine ions, we now can have 2. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And we get 0. It's balanced. And there we go. Calcium chloride. CaCl2. Isn't that cool? Iron 3 oxide. Hydroxide, excuse me. Now you'll note there that I have the um, Roman numerals 3 in red. That's to point out that that's what's important about this name here. We're going to look at that and realize that that Roman numeral means that there's a plus 3 charge. That's what it means. doesn't mean that there's 3 iron or 3 hydroxide. It means that the iron has a plus 3 charge. And we do this because iron has more than one oxidation. It can be iron 1 or iron 3. And so in this case, it's iron 3. So we write down our cation, iron 3. And then we realize that hydroxide is a negative 1. And plus 3 and negative 1 is not balanced. So what do we do? We get more hydroxide ions. And by getting more of those, we can uh, now balance the charges out. Now note here that the OH negative or the OH is in parentheses. You've got to put the whole thing in parentheses when you put the subscript there, or otherwise it'll just apply to the H. So it's very important that we put parentheses around the OH. And remember not to do that around single uh, atoms. Okay, We don't want to do that around single ions or single atoms. We only want to do that on polyatomic ions or things that need to be grouped. So now it's balanced, and we can write FeOH quantity 3. Isn't that cool? Writing covalent formulas. Now with writing covalent formulas, we're going to be a little bit more dependent on the prefixes and pay attention to the prefixes because that's really what puts it all together. Makes writing covalent formulas very easy. Molecular formulas or covalent compounds. Remember, molecular refers to covalent, not ionic. Ionic is formula units. Number one, write the symbols of the elements. Just write down the symbols. And then two, use subscripts to show the number of atoms of each element. Now, how do I know what the number of each element is? By the prefixes that are on the elements. Carbon dioxide. One carbon. And notice di, di means two, so two oxygen, carbon dioxide. I think you'll find that these are the easiest ones to name or to write formulas for. These are the easiest ones to write formulas for. Phosphorus pentachloride. Penta meaning five, so pay attention to that. One phosphorus, P, and five chlorine, Cl5, PCl5. It's very easy. Getting the hang of this? I hope so, because it's practice time. All right, let's try this. Writing formulas. Sulfur dioxide. Well, you look at that. Sulfur, S. Oxide means oxygen, O. Di means two. Sulfur dioxide is SO2. How'd you do? Calcium hydride. Now, that's hydride, not hydroxide. So don't let that fool you. You got calcium and two hydrogens to balance out the calcium. Calcium has a plus two charge. Hydride has a negative one charge. And note, that's an ionic compound. So it's calcium hydride. Aluminum acetate. Hmm. Acetate, polyatomic ion. Look that up. Aluminum, plus three. Acetate, negative one. Got to make sure you balance them out. And you should have something that looks like that. All right. Lead 4 chloride. The Roman numeral 4 tells us that lead has a plus 4 charge. Chlorine, look it up. It's a negative 1 charge. Need 4 chlorines to balance that out. PbCl4. Now, Pb is lead, not peanut butter. Keep that in mind. Sodium phosphate. Phosphate is not phosphorus. Phosphate is PO4. And that has a, ne a negative 3 charge. So we're going to need 3 sodium to balance that out. Na3PO4, there it is. 
Now remember, this is a recording, so you can go back and review any section, go over these again, work with them, try and understand why they came out the way they did. If you have any questions, send an email to Mr. Kazi at mrkazi.com. And be sure to check out mrkazi.com for PowerPoint videos and much, much more. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel and you will get notified every time there's a new uh, video up about chemistry. And I've got a lot more to come as we uh, begin to learn more about chemicals. As a matter of fact, what i got coming up next is a video on chemical reactions and chemical equations. So stay tuned. Oh, and by the way, happy ions. <laughs>